Palace on Wheels. They were originally meant to be the personal railway coaches of the erstwhile rulers of the princely states of Rajputana Baroda, the Nizam of Hyderabad and the Viceroy of British India. Now Hyundai has gone all the way out to redefine the luxury sector in the 6 and the 7 seater SUV segment to give us something that is one of its own which means that it is a palace and it is riding on 18 inch wheels in this signature spec to be precise let's have a look this ladies and gentlemen is the all new Hyundai Alcazar now Alcazar literally means either a castle or a palace or a fortress or even a military camp now if you are here to find out if it is a military camp or a palace stay tuned to find out <laughs> Welcome to a brand new episode of Car Sathi, your one-stop car buying comparative site. Now before we go any further, subscribe to the channel for brand new content like this one and while you are doing that, click that bell notification icon to receive notifications when we upload brand new content of a car like this one. Now the Alcazar is available in three trims, the base trim which is prestige, if you can call it that, the middle trim which is the platinum and the top spec which is the signature which we have with us today. Now it starts at a basic price of 16.3 lakh rupees and goes up all the way to 19.99 ex showroom Pan India. Let's start talking about this car from the front end which is what is in your face. Now as you can see very clearly this is based on the Palisade with all that chrome going on for it. Now the car is now endowed with the flat bonnet clamshell sort of a design with flat hood lines and it's got some lines which are here as well to give it that muscular character. Now incidentally the car is no broader than the smaller sibling which is Creta but Creta being the successful Creta it is at 1.2 lakh units in the last two years of its existence I think there is nothing that is stopping the Alcazar from being probably as successful as the Creta. Now the grille extends all the way to the end which is quite similar to that of the Creta except for the chrome elements Hyundai is calling it the dark chrome it is apparent when you appear and come closer to the car it's pretty apparent it's very clean but uh, to each his own some like it some don't like it the look of the car is very different it will stand out from the crowd uh, we sort of like it it has grown on to us now you got to do one thing you got to put it down in the comment section whether you like the design or not that's something that we are very keen in knowing if you like the design of this car at all now except for the chrome elements in the front there is a huge Hyundai logo right here now this is adorned by a very bold uh, lower half of the bumper which has the new skid plate which is a little different from the Creta now, again this covers the air dam from corner to corner it also houses the fog lamps which is placed really low in the car they are also LED which is again not a part of the Creta if you were to compare it with the Creta now halogen lamps for the indicators look all right but I think they are far too low so you have to be a little careful when you are driving around curbs around the city nothing else uh, apart from the standard look of the Hyundai design I think this is where Hyundai is trying to tell us where the designs could go with respect to the Palisade which probably is going to come around next year in the country for now I think this is what the future generations are going to look like all embezzled everything that shines is not gold but in this case is probably silver or even chrome dark chrome for that matter now Hyundai is trying to prove people who are thinking that this is an extended Creta very very wrong. This is not just an extended Creta but one of the longest car in segment. We are going to take a little look at that. But let's first look at the side fenders of the car. They are flared out to give that butch macho stance to this SUV which is probably one of the nicest looking cars on the side. Now you'll notice that there is plastic cladding all the way on the side of the car. In addition to that you'll also notice that the car comes with uh, the side steps which is quite uncommon in a car that is not very tall as you can see now this is a good addition to people who are not as tall and want this support to get inside and outside of the car the ingress and egress is not going to be difficult because the car is really comfortable and as you can see with the extended wheelbase the rear door is larger than that of the Creta for easy ingress and egress now you also have a blacked out b pillar here 
that extends all the way to the C pillar. Now this is something that is more like a piano finish. It makes the car look really good. You also have a quarter glass that has taken a little sort of a niche here to give that stance of a taller SUV. Looking at the car from behind, it is not as flamboyant or spectacular in the back as it was in the front. Now this is something that I dare say uh, resembles the Ford Endeavor. The lights are such, they are a honeycomb mesh inside which looks really nice in the night time. They have this decorated LED strip towards the outer edges of the light. They have a chrome bar, again the dark chrome element here with the Alcazar batching right underneath the Hyundai batching right here. Now it is a wide glass area. But above that is a high stop mounted lamp here with a spoiler that is integrated. That has got a nice finish to it in a nice piano black edging to it which looks very premium. One other thing that you'll notice is that it's got a shark fin antenna right here. Besides this, you'll also notice that there is a black sort of a band right towards the other lower end of the car. And the signature logo in this case because this is a signature spec. You'll also notice that the lower bumper has been redesigned that no longer looks like the Creta. Uh, on the higher variants of the Creta like the 1.4 DCT, you'll notice a twin exhaust pipe which is a standard feature here on uh, the Alcazar. You'll notice that these are twin embezzlements. The only problem is that they are a little bit misaligned. One other thing is that it's got a honey go comb grill sort of a thing going on for the upper half of uh, the uh, bumper but the lower half looks really sporty we'll give you a glimpse of that as well now everything else is in black you also have the reflectors on the sides of the car to make, make it look that little haunchy that little uh, you know it's a little bit pockier on the uh, you know the back end but it looks a little more modern it's got horizontal lines running across to give it that slightly more mature look that is not available in the front of the car let's take a look at the boot now now Surprisingly, uh, this is the most spacious boot here with 180 litres. Uh, competitors give you somewhere at 75 litres and 155 litres. Now you really can't use this space for all that luggage but I think a short trip here and there should not be a problem. Now these are with the seats standing up, the last row of seats. If you were to collapse them, this is the mechanism that you have here. All you have to do is pull this and push the seat downward to make a complete flat floor and that extends your boot space to about 750 odd liters of course you can do that with the middle row seats as well to increase the boot space all the way to a thousand and fifty one um you know liters of boot space now nothing comes in the way because it's a complete flat bench which is a rare uh, thing in cars these days but i think it's a overall cubic sort of a squarish boot space where you can fit in a lot of luggage i think this makes more sense than most competitors out there you also have cubby spaces uh, at the end of the car where you can actually remove the whole thing and add uh, the little things that you want to in a storage space here. Everything else like the jack and everything is now in a styrofoam sort of a uh, place where it's safely put and it does not rattle because it's all uh, thermocol. You also have the Hyundai Triangle in just in case. Now this has Velcro on the underside so it just sticks on to the lower half which is a nice addition so it doesn't rattle about when the car has been driven. This is extremely light and can be pulled out by anyone in the car and can be placed very easily back into the boot space. So it just stays there and it's a flush floor so you can add more and more luggage towards the end of the car. Now one other thing is that you also have both sound speakers towards the far end of the car but we'll come to that a little later. Now every single time there is a hassle to get into the third row of the car, there's a lot of hassle because someone has to get off, someone has to help the other to push that person inside. Here there is no issue as such because this has got a one touch tumble down seat in the second row to access the third row. That's what it looks like. While you can do that, you also have access to hold here where you can easily get into the car. It's no longer as cumbersome at, as it used to be. Now. You can place this down and pull the seat back. It's time to get into the third row of the Alcazar and I don't think that wheelbase is helping at all because uh, my knees are touching the back of the second row seats and I'm really not comfortable. This is not a place for adults, maybe children or shorter adults who can sit here for a little while but not for a long drive at all. Now you'll notice that there are some bits and parts that are all right because you're going to share the seat with uh, someone else and it's a little tight here. The headroom is all right because the car is now taller than the Creta by about 40 millimeters. That is something that you can 
can probably consider but the knee room here is absolutely not good it's not comfortable but you have a cup holder here you have a cubby hole here but you're not going to comfortable uh, in accessing those because you look you're going to have to use your left arm because the right arm is going to be a little awkward but you do have a usb port here because the kids are going to be really busy because they're going to constantly complain about the uh, you know the limited space that is available here one other thing is that you can also change the fan speed because the blower uh, option of changing fan speed is available on this side and an ac vent on both sides of the car that is probably the only thing that is likable about the space uh, welcome to the second row of the alcazar i think it's a fairly comfortable place to be in now you can uh, fairly notice that the seat cushioning is just appropriate i think it's not too soft it's not too hard it's really comfortable the under thigh support is average i would say a little more cushioning towards that end would have been perfect but you can also recline the seat forward or backward and there is enough movement for you to get a very comfortable spot in this uh, chair you can also move the chair forward and backward for that extended leg space which is not a problem however if you put the chair all the way in the back then the space for the knees for the person sitting behind you is almost zilch i think that's going to be a problem for the person sitting in uh, behind you now one other thing is that you can get really comfortable you have got soft touch materials where you rest your arms on both sides it's not too soft but it's not too hard i think this is hard wearing and this is going to last a really long time um when you're sitting a little more upright you also have the cushioning which comes with the alcazar badging they're really soft i think this is some sort of suede but i'm really liking it you can get really comfortable in the back of the car especially if it is chauffeur driven one other thing that you have here is a picnic table right here for i don't know a little knick knack here and there you also have cup holders on the side of both trays incidentally both on the left hand side uh, you also have a ridge here for i don't know your uh, laptops or your iP ipads in general you can also probably put in your phones just in case you're getting bored and you know you can probably hold this you also have a little sort of a netage here which you can use to probably i don't know plonk your phone there i don't know really but what you're going to really use that for but i think it's all right for a small bottle etc one other thing is that you've got a plenty of cubby spaces and holders right here you have one here which is a center armrest you can store a lot of stuff here it's a fairly decent and deep uh cubby hole you also have something that is for your phone in the back which is i think a segment first you can charge your phone by placing it upright sort of here for that wireless charging experience you have cup holders right here as well a small bottle will fit here easily it does not have ridges to hold the bottle but i think it should be all right you also have a cubby space right here along with a usb charger right next to it you also have two separate vents for the rear passengers and you can adjust it according to the flow right here one other thing is that the purification um you know the entire unit is right here and you have a display right here for the freshness of the air in the uh, cabin and the purity of the air for you know health reasons i think that is one gimmick which i think people will use from time to time coming to the door you have a sun blind a manual sunshade for yourself but i don't think it's a bad idea at all it gives you that sense of uh, you know luxury that you can expect of a car that cost about 24 lakh rupees on road but i think uh, it's a little bit flimsy but i don't think that's a problem it's not a deal breaker uh, you also have door handles that are finished in brushed aluminium they look a little premium you also have uh you know chrome embellishment for the uh, window sill right here where you have the buttons for the power windows and your uh, door pockets right here now one other thing is that the bose music system extends all the way from the edge of the door to about in the middle and it looks quite premium with the bose batching in uh, uh, finished aluminium and you also have very large door pockets that can hold about one liter of bottles you also have a little space a cubby space for your knickknacks i think that's a good addition and will keep people busy welcome to the dashboard and the driver's seat of the hyundai alcazar i'm quite impressed actually by the kind of quality that you can see here everything of course is a little scratchy you can feel it all over the place but i think it's a typical hyundai trait to give you good quality plastics even when you feel that don't be fooled by the stitching here i think everything is it looks all uh, you know classy in this koinak brown which is very similar to a bmw koinak brown um but uh, everything 
looks well put together pieced together and nothing feels out of you know place you will also not see any rough edges or sharp edges to hurt you or wherever you touch it's a smooth uh, surface area i especially like the break in the layers here you will see that the dashboard is in layers you have uh, the glove box and the tachometer and the speedometer here the unit here is a little different they are placed differently the ideal seating position can be found very easily in this car it's not very different from the creta as a matter of fact like we've covered in the front as well the breadth of the car is exactly that of the creta so i think you can get very comfortable into the car the car does not feel very big you also see that the view out from the car is is spectacular because they've got wide glass areas all over the place especially from the sunroof so the light is there uh let's talk about the center console i think it's a one unit here and it goes in a very fluid sort of a stage uh the uh what is that the mantra for hyundai is very fluid in nature the vents here are uh individual they are in brushed aluminum fit and finish they're slightly plasticky but i don't think that's a problem you also notice that the accents here are piano black you also have accents of piano black around the muse system here let's start with the infotainment system right here it's a 10.25 inches system uh well it's biggest in the segment uh, others are offering you a 8 inch uh, screen here this i think is one of the better systems out there it's a bit of a fingerprint uh, magnet but i think uh, the responsiveness the clarity the way it responds to the system is really good it's now time to go for a drive <laughs> Off we go. So there are a few functionalities on the steering wheel, as you can see. One of the more important things is the uh, voice command system that is connected to the main screen. Now this is something that is extremely intuitive. It's really quick. It'll show you the compass. You can change the entire uh, setting. There are buttons for people who do not want an entire touch screen because it's a little distracting when you are trying to drive. So you have buttons right here, shortcut menus, which is uh, interesting because you have the option. Very few modern cars are doing that for you. Uh, when you have voice commands, you can open the sunroof and close the sunroof. It is connected to Blue Link uh, from Hyundai, which has more than 60 connected features. Uh, it's interesting to see that you can start the car from outside. You can, you know, turn it off. You can turn the, um, you know, the ventilation of the seats on and off. All of that can be done from outside. Uh, let's look at the 360 degree camera. I think the view is extremely crisp. I have not seen a definition like this. It's really, really good. Uh, once you turn, it will show you the guidelines to move. Um, you know, as you can see here, it will show you how where you are turning exactly. And as you, as and when you move your steering, it will move along. Um, the clarity is just too good for a car um, from the Hyundai stable. I have not not seen that before. This is amazing. So the zero to hundred comes in in about eleven uh, seconds odd, which is not bad considering that it doesn't have a lot of grunt. It uh, becomes boomy, it gets noisy, but it gets the job done. And ah, uh, uh, honestly speaking, I don't see why this is a deal breaker in any way whatsoever, because this is a good, reliable engine that has done probably millions of kilometers by the time uh, it has come to the Alcazar. And I think uh, Hyundai has been very smart in making something that is. Uh, it's adequate it is it will get you from point a to b it is not a contraption it is not something that uh, is boring to drive it will give you the power when you need it of course like i said overtaking is going to take a little bit of planning uh, but uh, nothing that is uh, a deal breaker as such and if you notice that the ride quality is quite compliant even at high speeds it doesn't give you the jitters it's not something that you would be fearful about and the roads like these are completely smothered you don't need to plan anything at all and uh, it's just a feeling of sitting up right you know up there in a sort of a palatial sort of a feel to the car and you're sitting at a high ground above most of the people it's not that tall competitors are further larger and further bigger and more spacious but uh, i think this is something that is suitable for a lot of people who have uh, large families or need that kind of space every now and then 
One thing worth uh, mentioning is the Bose sound system. It's really crisp to listen to people who are a big fan of music and like their music with uh, bass. Uh, this is the one for you. Uh, look out, it's got eight speakers. Two of them are tweeters and uh, they sound really, really crisp. Uh, what I've also noticed is the braking of the car. It's excellent and at par with uh, bigger vehicles and it stops in a jiffy. It's really quick. One thing that is the opposite of that is the acceleration, which is about 11.03 seconds in the more powerful 2-litre pot. So I think the 0 to 100 there is uh, quite disappointing. At the same time, you can understand that this is a family car where you will need a lot of people, a lot of luggage space uh, to, you know, uh, and all of that is being tugged by uh, same engine that is being driven in the Creta, that drives the Creta and this one is no different. The performance is not very different from the diesel either. They're not disappointing, but uh, nothing to write home about. Um, one other thing is uh, how much um, focus or uh, you know attention Hyundai gives to safety. Uh, it's got six airbags. It's got the tire pressure monitoring system. It's built. Uh, Seventy-six point five percent of the car is built with high strength uh, steel. Uh, besides which, it's got uh, parking sensors up front and rear, which we've taken a look at right in the beginning of the window. Uh, of the review. We've also seen that uh, the car has uh, rear disc brakes. Uh, all of this put together, I think it makes a, it makes a, a good, good product, a, you know, a, a rounded of, well rounded of product. It's not uh, boring. It's not something that, you know, you can uh, completely ignore. At the same time, this is something worth considering given that it has, uh, uh, you know, various uh, uh, warranties that you can choose from from you know three years and five year plans they have a lot of options there you can also go all the way to 150,000 kilometers of warranty if I'm not wrong it's uh, something that you can live with uh, it's not a miss or a hit or miss with when it comes to service there is something like that there's something to like about the car everybody will like something about the car uh, very few things only if you are an enthusiast who likes to drive his cars uh, this may not be the one for you but uh, there's nothing that was that is a complete deal breaker. Um, there you go. Now you know.